All right, bro. I'll catch you later. Why did you do that? Oh my that? god, I am so sorry. I must have rolled crit on that handshake. I am oh so sorry. God. I swear, I am so Why sorry. Why didn't you I did stop not, doing it? I like, did not once mean to you realize what was happening, you help? did this whole combo get, thing I, on I, me. I must have forgotten to take my crit ring off from last raid. <sighs> hey, so, uh, where does that ring drop? Random number generation is any process that produces an unpredictable number. These random numbers influence things like map layouts, loot drops, bullet scatter, damage, and so forth. The use of RNG and the controversy surrounding it are the subject of this presentation. On one hand, we have games that are entirely deterministic, and on the other, games that are entirely chance. Some players prefer the endless rabbit hole of complexity, and others prefer pure chance, so as to not even be tempted into the rabbit hole. That said, how often do you see anyone argue for more RNG in a game? Like, hey, instead of gaining a level, what if we have a chance to either gain 1, 2, or 0? I think the trend is pretty clear. As players get more invested in a game, and they start noticing how RNG encroaches on their agency, they begin to lose their tolerance for it. RNG is under massive diminishing pressure from players in every category it supposedly serves a purpose in, so what's going on here? Why do games have RNG at all? I say, how do we reward the peasants for completing the dodo petting quest? Hey, how about a dodo pet? That Shut up, Larry! Shut up, Shut your mouth! <clears throat> Excuse me, of course, of course. Yes, yes make it random as all balls. Uh, try to put in colored present box, you know, so they think color matters, but really doesn't. <laughs> it's decided then. I'll tell them at once. Well, what did you expect to happen, Kyle? If developers even have a real reason for using RNG, it's either we can't think of anything better or we're exploiting it to addict players to our game. One of these is ethical, the other is not. However, most of the time you don't hear either of these reasons. You hear something more colorful that falls into the realm of superstition, which is what I'll talk about first. Randomness is the absence of pattern. This means we can't predict the next thing using any combination of previous things. There are tons of qualities that people ascribe to randomness that it just doesn't have. For example, randomness is fair. Well, no, randomness is random. Fair would require there to be some pattern of rewarding the same virtue consistently. Randomness produces variety. Well, no, randomness produces randomness. Variety would be a pattern of differing outcomes. Outcomes would have to be less likely if they've happened already, which is exactly what randomness isn't. RNG could very well do the opposite of these things, too. It just depends on what you're comparing it to. But... Once we can qualify what we're comparing RNG to, we don't need the RNG anymore. If we want property X and we know what property X is, RNG is just a smokescreen. Hey, this item has a 10% chance of dropping. Well, I did it 10 times and didn't get one. Oh, <laughs> well, there's going to be some uncertainty. I did it 10 times and got two. Oh, <laughs> that's RNG for you. <laughs> Congratulations, you now have a religion. Imagine getting empirical data like this. Do we reject the 10% chance hypothesis? If we don't, we're assuming we'll get compensating data if we extend the experiment. This isn't wrong per se, we do it all the time, but it is assuming the conclusion. Most false properties of randomness are variations of the gambler's fallacy in which the outcome of something is believed to change based on past outcomes when it really doesn't. Randomness is patternlessness. As soon as you hear someone say, RNG exists because of blah, and blah isn't one of the other two answers, they are probably committing the gambler's fallacy. If we want a pattern, RNG is not the right pick. You might be wondering how something could be unethical if it's unpredictable. Doesn't being unethical at least require a pattern of unethicalness? Well, we're not pointing a finger at any specific set of chance outcomes and saying, that's unethical. It's the way chance exploits our instincts. Our brains are pattern-seeking. 
We owe our entire success as a species to our brains and their ability to successfully seek out patterns. When confronted with the unknowable, we are woefully incapable of shutting off our pattern-seeking mechanism. When we talk about RNG, we're talking about systems invented by humans to be as unpredictable as possible to other humans. Ever wonder why gambling can be so addicting? Ever wonder why gambling is outlawed in so many places? Gambling is so addicting that businesses would be pressured to allow it just to compete for customers. And who is supposed to enforce gambling contracts? If two people bet their houses on a whim, the result would be a legally binding exchange of a house for nothing. And we know that people in a state of desperation are more likely to do riskier gambles. Statistically, they end up losing more. We would need a gambling debt collection branch of local sheriff's departments. The point is, as a society, we seem to realize the immorality of gambling one way or another. Chance is the bane of brain. We know that a variable ratio schedule is better at conditioning behavior than a fixed ratio schedule. If you have two machines, one that dispenses a treat every tenth button press, the other dispenses a treat with a one out of ten random chance, people will press the button on the chance machine more total times. Even knowing the odds, we fixate on the reward we most want and act as if our odds are better than they really are. This is substantiated by experiment after experiment. Simply take a fixed interval and make it a random interval at the same average rate and people will chase it longer. This method of addiction is cheap, effective, and insidious. Here's a game. You pay one coin to play and then we roll a dice. On a six, you get 60 coins back, otherwise you get nothing. Well, that sounds pretty good, right? On average, you expect 10 coins back for every one you spend. But let's say you can only play the game once. It doesn't change the expected payout, so you'll probably still play, but think about what your brain just did when forced to consider one game rather than an average over many. 10 coins may be the average payout, but you'll never go home with 10 coins after one game, so what does your mind prepare for? You wouldn't play the game if you fixate on the most likely outcome of zero. You fixated on the 60 coins the least likely yet only possible positive outcome. This bias carries over into games with less than favorable expected outcomes too. Going one game at a time, statistics wouldn't matter even if we knew them, our minds fixate on possible outcomes that we want the most. That guy over there won the jackpot. Are you going to say he shouldn't have gambled? Well, why not me? Gambling exploits the rounding error induced by our own hopes. Nature already does that enough. As powerful as our brains are, this weakness isn't going anywhere. I wish more of us in the gaming development community would start seeing in-game gambling as a symptom of an unhealthy shift away from quality and toward addiction. On to the ethical reasons. RNG is just a wit's end decision maker. It fills in the gaps when developers can't think of a better idea. For example, let's create some grass. We know grass is green and it points up toward the sun. No, but that doesn't look like grass. We need a bit of scatter. In this case, random scatter and realistic scatter might be indistinguishable to our eyes, until we learn more about grass. RNG is useful for making AI seem more intelligent, until we learn more about intelligence. RNG is useful for creating worlds until we learn more about worlds. It grows as we imagine, shrinks as we discover. So are there any ethical uses of RNG that aren't purely aesthetic? Generally speaking, maybe, as long as players focus on things they can actually influence. For example, this deck might be randomly shuffled, but as long as the cards we see are what matter most, not praying to RNGesus, it's ethical. That map can be randomly generated as long as players adjust for it rather than re-roll until they get a favorable one. The moment players have nothing better to do than cross their fingers, it's pushing unethical because you're dangling the patternless in front of the pattern addict. By this rule, random loot is probably unethical because loot is a focus of player effort, but they have no influence over it. Some games allow players to trade with each other, which somewhat dilutes the effect of random loot, 
But this should never be the primary purpose of trading. If trading only exists to mitigate random loot, and random loot only exists to be mitigated by trading, that trading system better be very well integrated and fun, or the loot shouldn't be random. The purpose of trading is to incentivize players to specialize and interact, not to sustain a random loot system. Wait a minute. If loot weren't random, then... Wait, 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 wait. Hang on. What were you about to say? Remember, randomness is patternlessness. It doesn't do any of that stuff. And what makes you think it's not doing the opposite of that stuff? For example, if your game already has enough content, you can easily make the rewards non-random. <clears throat> but then people will only do the things that reward what they want. Yeah, that's called having goals. I mean, if the game is truly dull enough to only demand one thing, then that's a separate problem. Worst case, if players disproportionately do one thing, the market value of its rewards will drop to compensate. But if loot were random, players will really only do one thing, the most efficient one, forever, regardless of how rich the content choice. This is a good example of how we hallucinate positive qualities of randomness because of its lack of qualities. We can see whatever we want through blurry glasses, but the demon is still there. Here, let's come at it a little differently. Consider skill trees or any other progression system that is non-random. When you get a skill point, you get the skill you assign 100% of the time. Heck, when you put gear on, you get the stats 100% of the time. Why are we not arguing, well, that should be random too, because blah. Because what? Then it would make no sense? Well, here's an idea. How about we start seriously questioning the use of RNG in modern games? We seem to understand why making non-random things into random things makes no sense, but for some reason going in the sensible reverse direction is a huge battle. The more excuses we make for this, the more our games will suffer.